I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to stop listening to Kanye West. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what he says. I don't care what he does. I'm never abandoning Kanye, Kanye West. I'm never abandoning Ye. Never ever am I abandoning this guy. I'm never going to abandon Kanye West. Ever. Vultures number one. Oh my God. Oh my God. Now, put away what you think about him as a person, what you think about him as a father, what you think about him as a friend, what you think about him as a, you know, co collaborator, peer, whatever. Kanye West, the artist, the artist, the producer, unbelievable, unmatched, unequaled. He is the greatest. I swear to God. Vultures 1 is absolutely crazy. There's been a lot of drama around the whole album. I'll speak about most of it, you know, in passing as we continue with this little segment. But I was trying to focus on the album itself. Wow. You know, this is one of the main reasons why I think it's impossible to let go of people like Kanye at his talent level. Because unfortunately, there's just not many people out there nowadays, artists, who are as good as him. That's the issue. Music nowadays is so shit, mostly because of streaming platforms, I feel like, and maybe record labels not paying or compensating artists well enough. So basically it leads to people making terrible, dumbed down music to kind of appeal to the general public and the masses and stuff, which is obviously not the peak of creativity. But nowadays in order to make it as an artist, you kind of need to go hard, right? You can't really survive being a, you, sorry, you can survive, but you can't really thrive being an indie artist anymore, right? Because these labels, these deals, they're taking money out of you all over the place, right? It be, there was a time in, there was a time where independent artists were able to make some money, were able to maybe break even if they went on tour if they maybe sold some merch at their live shows nowadays even live shows even merch these fucking companies these record labels are even dipping their hands into that they're taking bits of the merch money bits of the live show money imagine how crazy it's getting out there so obviously the super creative artists out there who would make really interesting music that would obviously challenge and that would obviously be mind altering that would obviously be genre defying they're now being dissuaded to do it because it's just not financially viable anymore, right? Because I think most artists out there, myself included, you don't really, you're not really in it for the money. You're just in it for the lifestyle. You're in it for the art. You're in it for the love, right? You're in it to share the talent, to share your perspective of what you have with people, right? You're in it for the fans. So if you can make a living where you're able to pay your bills, you're able to kind of, you know, live your life, you're basically okay. You don't really need to make crazy amounts of money. But if you can't even do the bare minimum, then how are you meant to be creative? So it's no surprise nowadays that there's no new artists coming up now, not to the level that they were in the past, who are even as close to matching Ye when it comes to his ability to put together an album. So when you hear this for the first time and you're hearing all these tracks going in all these different directions, you're hearing these weird voice inflections, you're hearing these really crazy, interesting ways that he flips choruses and verses and guest features and stuff, it, your brain is just going, wow. Your brain can't believe how good this is because stuff that we've listened to on a daily basis has been so terrible. And this is even when it's not mixed. Some of the tracks aren't even mixed properly, right? They're a bit rough around the edges. They're not, you know, whatever. It may be the vocals are a bit high here, a bit flat there, blah, blah, blah. Even with that being said, even with the digital streaming platforms taking it down, distributors getting angry, blah, blah, blah. You can see through all of that, right? Pull out to the side and you can like, this album is absolutely slaps from the beginning to the fucking end. Nothing but hits. Northwest fucking feature on Talking. Crazy. The Freddie Gibbs flipping feature on Back to Me. Maybe one of the best verses, guest verses we've seen maybe since Nicki Minaj on, what you call it, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Legitimately crazy guest verse on there. And again, I'm not, I don't really listen to Freddie Gibbs like that. I think he's a great rapper. But when he went in at the end, I was like, wow. Like, I'm not too sure if this is because it's a personal record, it, the themes of the verse kind of speak to maybe a situation he kind of went through, but Jesus Christ, 
he absolutely went crazy. And that is, again, part of fucking Ye's genius. Who's really, who out here is listening to Fred, F Freddie Gibbs, YG and Quave on a daily basis? I don't know. I don't, I know I don't. Again, I'm I'm not that, you know, I'm not that put off by YG. I was more of a Draco the Ruler guy, but whatever. And Quavo, solo stuff, it's not really for me. Migos, cool. But YG snapped on Do It. Quavo on paperwork went crazy. Why? Because of fucking Kanye. Kanye has this ability to bring out the best in people. He is one of the greatest producers we have now. He's doing that. He's able to bring pe to bring something else out of people that they don't have. He's maybe to able to push them to write better verses, to kind of you know have different voice inflections, to rap in different cadences, like different themes, not curse, whatever. He's absolutely crazy crazy what he does and um, for yg and quaver on here but the freddie gibbs with guest verse is just wow 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 fuck some with playboy carton and travis scott i can't lie i might have replayed the first minute of that track a, a million times i swear on my life i'm not gonna i swear on my life i may have replayed the fucking start of that track a million times and i'm not even joking to you that first minute of that tr of that chat i'm gonna fuss so right so right and then carty's voice comes in i'm gonna fuck some come on come on playboy carty went in are you dumb are you fucking crazy are you absolutely crazy like even travis scott had travis scott probably had one of the best verses he's ever had even excluding fucking utopia his verse on this track is absolutely incredible then you get bump j and little dirk killed it on vultures play with carly and, and rich the kid and, and again please don't lie when's the last time anybody cared about rich the kid when's the last time anybody give a share about rich the kid and he came in absolutely smashed carnival to pieces but the but the verse the chorus of that fucking track the chorus of that fucking track is gonna do absolute numbers on festivals. Don't be surprised if we get some videos from like what you call it, um, from festivals coming up very soon. I forgot which one I was thinking of just now, where they're gonna be in the millions of views. That verse, especially with the football chant, which is amazing, because there's videos now featuring um, where Kanye is basically showing a music video that he's filming, where he filmed the music video with Inter Milan Ultras, right? Hooligans singing along to the the chorus that goes, Go, 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 go. Head so good, she on a roll. She ride a dick like a carnival. I done did the impossible. Go, 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 go. Head so good, she on a roll. She ride a dick like a carnival. I did the impossible. Oh. Oh, yo, can you imagine how crazy that's going to go off in a festival? Are you insane? Do you know how many people's faces are going to get punched? How many fly kicks are going to get swung in the air? Can you imagine the fucking mosh pit when that fucking, when that fucking drops? Are you insane? <sighs> don't, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. And then of course, Rich the Kid comes in and absolutely snaps honestly and i don't even give a shit about rich the kid like that but rich the kid went fucking crazy uh playboy carty went absolutely dumb as well his verse is gonna get in um ty dollar sign floated on that track as well it's absolutely just insane how good the entirety of the album is um chris brown on, on beg forgiveness incredible um good, good um good don't die on my unfortunately album um it's been taken down because i think of the donna summers you know um what you call it um the Donna Summers sample on there, problematic and king at the end, absolutely incredible. So you have to say, given that Kanye has been excommunicated from the music industry, right, because of his anti-Semitic world tour that he went on, which was obviously very ill-advised, you'd imagine that a lot of people in the industry have definitely been dissuaded from working with him, right? So to be able to produce an album of this level, of this quality, of this standard, with everybody against you rightfully so for the things that you said because i think you know one of the things i don't like about Ye is definitely the victim complex he has right he's always a victim he can never really understand why people like he's 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 okay with understanding he he's okay with the idea of him saying what he wants right he's okay with that 
but he's not okay with people reacting very strongly to what he says. Like he feels that you can just say what you want and no one should be able to try to cancel you. But it's like, no, 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 no. Sometimes if you say really hurtful things to people, they will go out of their way to make sure that you are not successful again. Like that's something that's going to happen. It's just what it, it's just what it is. So you have to be cautious of, you have to kind of be mindful of the things that you say and not to piss too many people off because it can have some long lasting ramifications for your life and your career. But yeah, he doesn't really think that way. It's always like, I'm the victim, I'm the victim, I'm pure, I'm pure, which is dumb. But regardless of that, put that to one side. I'm just saying to be able to create with all of that turmoil around you and knowing that people in the industry aren't going to co-sign you because let's be for real, the weird thing about this yay release, like I've not seen a yay release like this where the majority of the industry aren't really rooting for it. You know, like usually when it's a yay release, like you think of the Wyoming era, like I think you, yay's, Kanye has always had the worst for me the most cringy circle jerk around him i feel like sometimes it's always kind of a, a hindrance even now with all the drama with that flipping um, distribution and um, the distributing company basically you know taking down the original vultures that was on the streaming platforms because he decided to renege on the deal that they had and stuff like i just feel like Kanye has the worst people around him personally i feel like he's you know maybe it's because of his mental state maybe because he's too trusting maybe because people take advantage of him i'm not really too sure but he's definitely definitely has the wrong people around him and they definitely don't help with the situation but regardless i did remember as there was a time where i despised a lot of the people that are around him especially some of the people that were on my timeline who i'm kind of like loosely associated with because they would always kind of circle joke around him and they wouldn't really want i wouldn't say hold his feet to a fire but they would never kind of want to pull him up on some of the dicey things he was saying before he went anti-semitic right and they kind of were always there kind of joking and sucking him off. And there's no better example of it than the Wyoming time. When everyone went to Wyoming and pretended they wanted to be fucking farmers and shit. And they were buying into all that sort of nonsense, right? And that kind of Jesus pivot, which, you know, it's funny because what, is, what, what happened to the Christianity, right? What happened to the Christianity? I think that's completely gone out the window. But regardless, that era of Kanye's friends were the worst because they were the get-along gang, right? They were just there for the, for the good times, for the free merch, for the Yeezys and stuff, right? And then as soon as it got bad, they all kind of run and jump ship. So it's really interesting to see a yay launch that is mostly powered by the fans and not by the influencers. And not by all those kind of like industry people. It's mostly the fans that are pushing vultures. Like they're the ones that are, fighting, that are really championing him. That are kind of reminding people what's going number one. I think vultures is kind of climbing up the charts. That are really pushing and kind of advocating for yay are definitely the fans. And I think that goes to show... That obviously he's how dedicated his fan base is but i think it's also a reflection of just how terrible artists are nowadays that people are like hey we've seen what music is like without yay and we'd rather support someone that is able to make this type of music you know here and there because you know not all of his recent albums have been hits but the fact that he can make this this level of art and still be that toxic is very much a example of just how weird it is when it comes to creativity like i've always said like unfortunately some of the worst people in the world make the best art and maybe that is a kind of requirement to make good art is that you have to have these questionable points of view you maybe have to do some really horrible things in your life that are somewhat going to inform the work that you put out there and it's going to resonate with people but nowadays in the world that we live in you know where people are very um quick to maybe um be hurt by certain things or maybe they're really or no maybe the world we live in where people are not willing to put you know to separate the art from the artist it's hard to navigate like that but for me personally there's not you know there isn't anybody out there like him there really isn't like he, like again this is with the album not really being mixed properly with some of the verses and lyrics and stuff not being that you know complex and deep and shit but just listening to it from a purely musical standard point of view in terms of the you know the flipping melodies the verses the choruses the soundscapes where it's going the journeys each track go on like too much it's too much it's too much it's too good especially some of the activations he's got good now as well there's a launch for i think there's a there's an italy performance happening very soon um which is going to be great there was obviously one in new york i think in las vegas i've got the other one somewhere else so he's doing all these amazing listening party things which i think are really great ways to kind of enjoy the album with everybody around you with everybody else in that stadium with you as well and have all these artists jump on stage and do their thing and shit i think it's a great collective way to kind of listen to a project together right um that's really great that's something that he's kind of pioneered that 
that regard. But I love it, man. Honestly, Vulture's number one I love. And the great thing about it is that he announced that there's two more coming out. It's going to be a free, um, it's going to be a flipping trilogy. So we've got two more of these dropping very soon. And the great thing about it as well is this is all independently done. Um, obviously, it's not by choice because I think labels have basically washed their hands of Ye and most corporations. But it's absolutely incredible. I really recommend you check it out. I've loved every listen I've had of it. I can't wait to check it out again in the gym when I go later today. And I've been really enjoying Vultures. And I think you should check it out. It's definitely one of my most enjoyed albums lately. And it's great to just to see Ye back out. You know what I mean? And flexing, doing his thing, enjoying himself and shit. And, you know, I think the last thing that we want as fans of Ye is just no more interviews. I don't think we want any more interviews. Let him say what he wants on stage and shit. But I think as long as he's out here putting out the music to the level that he's doing at the moment, I'm okay with it. But just no more interviews, please. I don't want him to share his thoughts on Hitler. I don't want him to share his thoughts on Jewish people. I want him to fucking just make great art. And even if he does say racist stuff, unfortunately, because there's no one else at his level, I'm not also going to ban them because he's just too good. The guy's just too much. He's just too good at what he does. He really fucking is too good at what he does. So big up Yay, big up Vultures One, and I can't wait to hear more of it soon. I can't wait to hear more of it very soon.